Good afternoon, I'm Tom at Ledgemere. Behind me is my second oldest tractor. It's a 1973 International Farmall 140. And for those of you who've been watching, this week is Tractor Week and today is day four. This this tractor is a little uh, special for a couple reasons. It's it's the ultimate replacement of the Farmall Super A or Farmall A, which was introduced in 1939. And it has the same motor as the last two tractors I showed you, the 200 and the Super C. But instead of being rated at 23-ish, 24 horsepower, this one was actually rated around 28. And the reason being is just because of the dome pistons, advanced technology, the better carburetors, etc. This one, 1973 was the last year for the Farmall. And so the Farmall is right here on the 140 decal. In, in the early 70s, this was the last the last uh, holdout of the Farmall name. They went strictly international around 1974. And so 1973 was the transition year for the Farmall 140 into the International 140. Historically, after 1958 until 73 or so, the International 140 was an industrial tractor, so they often came yellow. They had a, a, a heavier front bolster, a heavier front axle. A lot of times they came with a foot throttle and they were a little bit different. They were they were industrial so they were they were made for that purpose. But things being what they were by the, the early 1970s, the Farmall name was was going by the wayside and international was what was put on all the tractors. So you can see it has the international on the side. This is a is a one row. This is a one row vegetable in cultivating tractor, which still has the original cultivation. So you you offset here like this. So you're you're sitting off to the side. You can see down below. In 1958, International Harvester introduced the Farmall 140, and this tractor replaced the previous 130, which had replaced the 100, which had replaced the Super A, which had replaced the A. So this tractor was the ultimate culmination of the A, introduced in 1939 and produced until 1979 in either Chicago, Illinois or at the Tractor Works in Louisville, Kentucky. They made this tractor in both places. My 140 was bought brand new at Waterman Farm Machinery in Sabattis, Maine. This is a 1973 model and one of the, the modern features of this tractor is that it has a spin-on filter instead of the element which was in the previous version of this tractor. It has the the touch control. There's the two lever touch control on it. So you've got the right side and the left side. 
when you use this control here, you can see that it's all the way forward. That means that it's lifted up all the way here. And so this touch control here operates that rock shaft on that side and this one at the same time. This one here is this one, which operates the, the fast hitch or your rear cultivator. The reason they had these two separate touch control valves was so that you would complete a row and lift your front rig and then afterward you would lift the rear rig following through. The International 140 that I have is, is 12 volts. There were 66,910 of these units built between 1958 and 1979. Initially the 140 was a 6 volt tractor and to my knowledge in 1964 when they restyled it to this design to match the 404, 504 series tractors, they at that time went to 12 volt. I, I know in 64 it was when the Cub went to 12 volts, so I'm presuming that the 140 went 12 volt in 1964 as well. Originally the tires that came on these were pretty small. They were 8 or 9 inch wide and they were still 24 inches but they were they were narrow. And then at the end of the run you could get 11.424 or as these are they're 12.424 so you could get a good sized tire on the back. And this tractor has the optional wheel weights on the back. And one interesting fact about these offset tractors is that one of the wheels, which is the one on this side, is cast. You can see this, this wheel in here is cast iron. So it's almost like having a double stack on this side. And the reason for that is because the tractor's offset. So there's extra weight on the side the engine is not on. This has the, the bigger front wheels on it, and it's got this this uh, the disc or the donut weights on it, which replace the, the flat steel, or the, sorry, the flat cast iron weights that you see on the older tractors like the Super A's and the 200, etc. To my knowledge, this is the original paint on this tractor. It, it's been touched up a little bit here and there, but as far as the hood and tank goes, it's the original paint. The original owner's grandson sold this to me, so it was another one of those situations where the, the old man passed away. The grandson had it in his garage and didn't want it, and so I, I consider myself to be the second owner, but I guess you could call me the third owner if you want to include the limited amount of time the grandson owned it. The original owner's name was Harold, and he had this little license plate. And so you see these... Um, these little license plates. Sometimes you'd see them at, at like Ames department store or Walmart even. You'd go through the little rotary thing and find find your name on it. But the, the yellow plate is, a, is an older version of the main plate. So it has a, a 16 inch wheel instead of a 15 like the, the 200 and the, and the Super C did. Or the, the Super A. This is the new styling here that was continued until 1979. As you can see on this tractor, it has the optional belt pulley attachment. And you can see, whereas the Cub, it covers the PTO to run the belt pulley, the 140 actually has it separate. And you have to take the pulley off really to use the fast hitch because it kind of gets in the way of certain implements. So we take the belt pulley off. And this tractor did come with a, with a buck saw or a saw rig or a... Up here in Maine, we just call them saw rigs, but... In different parts of the country they call them different things. I had no intentions of using it so I sold it with a cub that I got rid of a month or so ago. This is the original backrest that was on it. Uh, the seat cushion was basically no good when I got the tractor so this came off a of John Deere M that I had and then I did get these because it's way more comfortable to put your, your, your uh, forearms on there. It has flashers on it that came standard. The Cub had one, the 140 had two, one on each side. And so the flasher unit's down in here. The adjustable seat. And funny story is, with the exception of the tractor I got from my brother, I have yet, this tractor included, to get a tractor 
that did not come with a toolbox chuck up block full of tools and so I've taken them out and moved them but they came with everything that you can think of in that toolbox and he had changed this light this is the, the light post right here so this should be here but he added on a little bit the tractor is very tight it spent its entire life inside it's been well maintained it doesn't really leak there's a little bit of hydraulic fluid here but it's really nothing i, I haven't been noticing puddles under it and the, the touch control has been fine same gas tank as the Super A, the 200, Super C, these are all exactly the same. The touch controls are pretty much the same helper spring on it here. And so when I got this 140, it came with a six foot sickle mower that goes in the middle, which is a huge mower for the middle. And I, I like them for the advantage of that you can see where you're going, but I don't like them because they don't trip. So if you hit an obstruction, you end up really damaging the mower. So you have to be super careful with them. And I've got that all cleaned up, but I, I have a video of putting it on this tractor. And so it worked really well, but but I cleaned it up and preserved it and put it, put it away. I have a, a rollover plow, a hillside plow for it. For the fast hitch, I've got the carrier that came with it and it came with some cultivators it was like a homemade set of cultivators that I that I sold and it came with some weird fast hitch homemade thing that the guy made and it came with uh, a hiller that that was built for this tractor so seven or I think it came with seven attachments half of them were were homemade but they worked and I did, I sold a couple of them, including the, the saw rig. There's really no telling how many hours were on it. They didn't come with an hour meter. I don't think, I've never seen one with one. It, it's still got the emblem on the, the steering wheel, which is kind of neat. I did get an aftermarket fuel cap from International. You can still get those. And it's just a sweet running tractor. It runs really well. And compared to the Cub, it's 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 twice the tractor that the Cub was. And once once you drive this tractor compared to the Cub, you you pretty much never really want a Cub again. Uh, the capability is it's just so much more with a 140 over a Cub. 140 had a, a four-speed transmission, similar to the Super C, same transmission as the Super A. I did just put a new muffler on it. The other one was toast and I, I didn't put a clamp on it just because the other one was, was stuck. It was pretty much rusted to the, to the manifold pipe. And pretty easy to take it off if, if uh, you don't put the clamp on there. Some people will, will say don't do that because it'll get soot and you can see I've got some soot on the hood, but that's okay. It's better than trying to pound on that thing get it, to get it off later. Maintenance on these tractors is really simple. So you've got your, your air cleaner oil here. So you just take this off and put, I usually put whatever I've got on hand, but you know, 30 weight or whatever. Here's your carburetor, easy to access. Fuel bowl there. So if, if you get sediment in that, you could just unscrew the bottom and that, flip that bale up and then the, the glass comes out. And so you can just dump that and back in business. There was an optional touch control temperature gauge that could mount here and it would sit up on top of your touch control. It would sit up on top of the touch control there, but this doesn't have it. And the only way you can get this part is from a junkyard. You can buy a new temperature gauge, but you have to have the right part here. And so a lot of these tractors were shipped without it. Like I mentioned, you've got the spin on oil filter here's your oil pressure gauge there's no temperature gauge on these tractors you have your ammeter and your your oil pressure that's about it so there you have it a 1973 international farmall 140